Up TV. I'm your host, Gwen Burton, and today we're with Brent Butler, recording artist. Hey, how are hey. you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. So, you're a hip hop artist. Yes. How did you get involved with that? You know, when I was younger, a kid, I always just wanted to be like a rock star, and by, you know, like 13, 14, I was playing in different punk bands um, in my hometown, Vineland. Um, but Vineland, interestingly enough, which is in South Jersey, is very like hip hop centric. You know, I would sometimes start stringing together rhymes, and if there was like a freestyle battle going on or something like that, like I would jump in. The songwriting that I was doing when I had to leave my band behind um, just started more and more evolving into rap. It was sort of like an internal creative battle, but I decided to just, you know, I'm just gonna let go and just sort of take it wherever it takes me. I like to still have live guitar at my shows, but yeah, it's all rap. Cool. One of the videos of yours that I really liked was called Old English. White boy grabbed that pandemonium, brain flooded with serotonin. Look scary, don't eat a tear and loathing in Paris, homie. Ball hop around Curry Town, these women love me like karaoke, goddamn. We yell at God's life. Oh, yes. And um, it's pretty trippy. It's uh, It takes place in Central Park, and I guess you're just having taken a lot of magic mushrooms. Yeah. And then you kind of turn into a vampire. So what ends up happening in the video is sort of taking shrooms, confronting inner demons. Mm. So I'm in no way trying to tell people that if you do shrooms, you're going to turn into a vampire and maul women in Central Park. Um, but perhaps, uh, perhaps you will. No, uh, perhaps, uh... You can access those sides yeah, of yourself. Yeah, yeah, or like, it's more like about sort of just, uh, recreating symbolically and interpretively maybe like the confronting of certain demons within your character. Um, which is actually much deeper than you might think it is when you just hear the song or the, or the video. But. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm actually writing an article about um, confronting, dealing with your demons for the next issue of Brown Rice Magazine. I was just wondering what your take on psychedelics were and what their value is. Very realistically, in my practical life, I, I view sh the psychedelics in general as more of a spiritual practice and oh, cool. something for, you know, almost like meditation and cleaning the slate in your brain and so your So how spirit. exactly does that happen? Like you have certain feelings and hallucinations that like, you know, show you different things? Like what exactly happens when you take a lot of mushrooms or, you know, whatever it may be? Is it sort of takes away a lot of the lenses that you've been wearing, all the social conditioning that's on you, all of your preconceived notions about the world around you, and you're actually able to just see things. Typically, especially as New Yorkers, I'm always thinking like, what are the top 10 things on my to-do list today? I'm very like anxious about, oh, you know, how's, how's this video doing with the views? And I got this studio session later, but you know, this and that, and I think with with psychedelics are sort of, um, you know, I hate to call them a shortcut. I don't want to have that to have like a negative connotation, but you know, for people who do meditate and, and use yoga to reach that sort of place of being completely, um, clear headed mm -hmm. and present, I think that, that it's a good way to, to experience that. So, it, have you found that it kind of has an impact on your creativity as well? I look at things more objectively, start to appreciate just the energy. Um, energy being like this this whole other dimension and, and force that, you know, we're not perceiving visually all the time, but we can begin to be more receptive to it and understand how colors around you are affecting your mood and how sounds in the music are affecting your mute mood and, and really playing into your you know your overall psyche and so becoming more aware of those things and how to engage with them and utilize them and then sort of 
transferring that back into the music, um, I think is extraordinarily valuable for sure. So oh. I would say, yeah, it definitely has a, a positive impact on creativity. So would you say that you had always been kind of a spiritual seeker and that the mushrooms opened up a new, or the whatever kind of psychedelics opened up a new vista to, to that? Or were taking psychedelics kind of the catalyst for um, expanding your consciousness and spirituality? You know, I was this angsty punk kid that was like very like political and tied up in like, you know, what's going on with these like world affairs and not focusing on like this bigger, grander, eternal truth. Psychedelics are a huge catalyst for it because you you can perceive these things and, and really experience the magic of life again, like you hadn't since you were a kid necessarily, and really gaining this awareness and appreciation of things around you that you might not have before. Um, it helps you realize how infinite the scope of universe truly is and how you know magnificent and beautiful a thing that is and whether you can you know I think that it's hard to then put a, a dogma on it from any like given established religion but you can start to um, be more receptive to these uh, spiritual ideas for sure. So to go back to your childhood yeah. um, when did you kind of realize um, that health and diet were kind of interrelated. So I was actually extremely overweight, like most of my childhood. Really? Uh, yeah, I was gigantic. You know, around like 13, 14, and I'm looking at the older generation of my family, which is, you know, experiencing extraordinary health problems from diabetes and, and you know, heart problems and kidney problems and, and just all these, all these things. and, and early death and I felt like the diet was inextricably tied to that and then the other part of it was just I wanted to look good because I could not get any girls at all <laughs> and so I had to change that that was top priority and <laughs> so it was not actually that noble of a cause but um so what did you do exactly when you were you know a young teenager to change your lifestyle and diet Again, I was a pretty, like, stubborn, angsty, bullheaded kid, you know? So, like, if I got behind this idea, um, I was all about it. So I would cut out the high intake of carbs that I had, like, pretty cold turkey and, like, the preservatives and whatnot. And family members actually were like, you know, what are you doing? Like, it's unhealthy. They what were you concerned. Doing? Yeah, they, they actually thought that, like, I was doing something unhealthy mm -hmm. and that it was some sort of, like disorder even that I was like so concentrated on my diet but what's amazing is that through changing my diet you know skin problems that I had went away um even like social blockades if you will and anxiety like, yeah and just all these different things just sort of melting away when I was like eating differently and treating my body differently to the point that you know I realized that I was capable of all new sorts of awesome things um cool. so it was great but honestly it, again it's not it wasn't super easy and i would i would honestly you know shoplift healthy food all the time and i'm not Cause promoting because it was expensive More yeah expensive. yeah a lot of times people ask me like well don't you like miss you know candy and all these other things and i'm like not really because my taste buds has just changed like I don't I don't look at those things as things that should be in my body anymore or food. Yeah. I see them as like toys or something you know it doesn't look like like now my appetite is attracted to like nutrients even more so than like taste or indulgence or anything I'm actually like I crave like the nutrients in certain things it can taste disgusting but it, it oftentimes actually tastes way better. Like I would actually take, you know, an apple over a Snickers any day. So what's next for you? Continuing doing some of the verse of the week things and more videos with Flow Vision Media. Um, I'm also working on my debut EP. What's that called? Um, right now it's called Selective Memory. So Brent Butler, would yeah. you do me the honor of rapping? 
for the 50 Pro TV viewers? I would be honored to. Thank you. Okay. Hippie TV. <clears throat> if it ain't hip hop, this is Buddha Rock. Brown Rice Magazine. Food for thought. I'm so zen right now, time don't tick tock. So it never makes sense when I view the clock. You dig it? Fresh greens and some whole grains. Riding out of body on the soul train. Gwen cooking up the soul food. It's Nirvana, baby, Cobain. Come on, everybody, get a plate. Take a minute just to get away and meditate. The thing that I love about hip hop is I get to entertain and educate. If y'all don't know me, let me set it straight. I'm Brent Butler, coming straight from the Garden State. Hope I kept with your attention span. This is Hippie TV, baby, Brent and Gwen, forever. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brent, where can we hear your music and watch your videos and stuff like that? Fantastic question. I am all over the, the internet. Um, from Facebook.com slash Brent Butler Music. Uh, also, SoundCloud.com slash Brent Butler Music, where there's tons of free downloads. Um, and you can check out all of it. If you just search Brent Butler on YouTube, you'll come across much more and uh, Brent Butler Music on Instagram. Cool. Thank you, Brent, for coming and you. talking with us. And again, I'm Gwen Burton. I publish Brown Rice Magazine. And if you haven't ever heard of it, um, go to brownricemagazine.com and I sell copies of it on Etsy. And this has been Hippie Club TV. Thanks for watching. Bye.